But let's say he buys it back. Then he sells it again. If he sells it outside the trust, is that was is it this, like any trust? When you pull the money out, you do have to pay taxes on that. And as long as it stays in a trust, it's okay. Is it? Is it, um, I'm probably getting the body of law I shouldn't be talking about here, but, but I'm just trying to think of my own knowledge of these trusts. Is that sort of what happens? Like so how does can, this work? Is what you're asking. How, how does the trust yeah, the mechanics? How does the, yeah. yeah, how does the mechanics work without um, incurring the tax? And so, to mm -hmm. the extent that the client receives payment back from the trust personally. That's where taxes do. Understand that he's become a lender. So mm -hmm. what he first did is he sold the property and he exchanged it for a promissory note. So he became a lender okay? and mm -hmm. he gave up ownership of the trust. He doesn't own the trust. The trust owes him back the money. So that's the first concept. Number two, the trust can invest in a number of things, including joint venture partnerships with you as the note holder or the creditor. And so we do that by setting up an LLC where the LLC has multiple owners the note holder and the trust. So the mm -hmm. trust is still invested into an LLC, but we give typically you the majority of the ownership because you're doing the sweat equity. You're finding the deal, you're structuring the deal, you're running the deal. And in that scenario, should the deal sell for a game, you personally can take that game or the trust can purchase your position in exchange for a promissory note while rolling back it, whatever its investment was still inside of that deal. So now you have okay. two promissory notes. One trust, two promissory notes. We just did it for another client. They sold mm -hmm. cryptocurrency for $5 million. It's actually Bitcoin. They bought it mm -hmm. for 50,000, went to 50 million. And at 54,000 a coin, they exited 5 million into the trust. Four of that 5 million was used to start a, a brand new tech, tech startup company. Mm -hmm. That was part of her dream to get away from the big tech company and do her own thing. And so instead of having to pay about 1.85 million in tax, right? She lives in tax California. She's able to defer that tax and put the majority into a startup company, all tax deferred. Now that startup company may go to $50 million in 10 years. What's going to happen? Well, that original 4 million that went into the startup company rolls back into the trust, which still owes her the money. And mm -hmm. that additional gain can be used for a, uh, another promissory note. Let's call that $46 million promissory note. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty of this deferred sales trust. It's the execution and the team to help you go through that. That's the biggest thing, but it's, you know, that's why you hire 1031 qualified intermediaries. That's why you hire capital gains tax solutions, us, why you hire a financial advisor and CPAs. We map it all out. Mm -hmm. We execute the business plan and then you, you get the chance to grow your wealth.